Hi, this is Darren Lyle. For some reason, I'm inspired to do character work today, and I've had this little guy on my hard drive for ages, and I thought, it's time to bring him to life. Um, I've split the drawings up into um, individual images, one for the front view and one for the uh, side view. So let's bring those images into Blender. I'm going to open up the properties panel over here on the right and um, go into background images and add an image. And I'm going to open up um, this and I'll choose, I'll begin with the front view here. And I want this, I want this image to be for only the front view camera. So I'll choose that. And so now if I go to the front view, you should see him there. All right, so you know what? I'm gonna get rid of all these things as well. Just delete all those. Now uh, I'll choose a new image. I'm gonna go add image. And for this one, I want the side view. And I want it to be only visible in the right orthographic camera. All right, let's take a look and see if that actually did what I think it did. I'm going to hit the three key on the numpad. There's my uh, side view and the one key on the numpad, and there's my front view. So now I'm going to create a new uh, screen layout up here. Hit the plus key, create a new screen layout, and call this character modeling just so I have this. And I'm going to split the screen up here into two. And this one on the left, I'll do the, the front. And this one on the right, the side view. And now I think I need to move this guy up so he's, his feet are on this ground plane here. So let's see. Uh, he would be the front view here, right? And I could bring him up in the Y. Whoa. So bring him up to say five. And now I can come over here with the right side and bring him up to five as well. Let's see if this works. There we go. Now they're on the ground plane. Um, I think I want them also to be not quite so bright. Opacity. This is what I want. I'm going to take this down to 0.25. And over here as well, this is the side view. Take this down, the opacity down. 0.25. There we go. Now, here is my screen layout ready for... Uh, character modeling. I'm going to um, come over here and hit control up arrow to go to the front view. And I think I just want to begin by creating a single plane. And I'm going to bring this up, rotate it a bit, and I think I'll do negative 90. There we go. Now, I want to split the plane in half. So I'm going to hit Control R, excuse me, go to edit mode, hit Control R, and just click once and click again. And now that plane has been subdivided into two halves. I don't need one of the halves, so I'm going to delete that. Delete faces. I'm going to move this into place. And where I want it is right between the mouth and the nose. Now you might ask, what in the world is this going to do for you? Well, let's take a look. I've got the plane here. And what I want to do is mirror it 
so that whatever I do on one side is mirrored over on the other side. So to do that, I just need to select the plane in object mode here, go to the modifiers tab, add a modifier and click mirror. And I'm gonna choose clipping and I'm gonna also choose apply modifier in edit mode. Now what happens is when I go to edit mode and say go to vertex mode and move this around, you can see that it mirrors what I do on each side. So now I can just concentrate on modeling one side of my character. So let's begin doing that. I'm going to hit control up arrow and now I've got it in full view here. So. What I'm gonna do is begin extruding these edges out around the mouth and out around the nose and the eyes, keeping in mind um, good edge flow so that when it's animated, it deforms in a realistic manner. What I'm gonna be doing is trying to create the edge flow so that it mirrors the structure of the muscles of the human face. And if I do that, then when it deforms, when I create shape keys for the animation of the character, the face deforms in a more realistic and proper way. So that's why I'm doing this um, and concentrating on the edge flow right up front. All right, so let's get to work here. I'm going to hit E key to extrude and just move out. I'm gonna do, I think, four extrusions here along the top. All right, now I'm gonna go back to vertex mode and just do a little adjusting here. All right, so there's the first edge loop around the mouth. Now what I'm gonna do is extrude this edge up for the nose. So I'm gonna extrude, move up a bit. And for this particular edge, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm just gonna bring this point down, creating a whole new edge right here with an extra vertice on it like that. So now I can extrude this edge up for the nose, like so. Now I'm just going to select these edges here, these two edges, and extrude up. And one more time, up to kind of the near the top of the eye here. Okay, so now let's work on the eye. I'm gonna select this edge and extrude it out to the side a bit. And now I can adjust it so that I can begin extruding straight out of the top and bottom edges of this polygon here. So now what I wanna do is extrude out of here, out of the top here. And I wanna put three um, edges or three subdivisions along the uh, top of the eye here. So I'm going to hit E for extrude and just begin coming up across the top of the eye. Now I'll do the same for the bottom of the eye. And then bring them together here by selecting the points and hitting the F key. All right, so now you can see what we have here. We've got this two-dimensional loop mask. Let's go ahead and bring out this edge loop. I'm just gonna extrude and pull out, maybe scale out a bit. And then connect these points up here using Alt-M and merge at center, I suppose. That'll work. All right, now I'm gonna connect these two edge loops together here. Begin selecting these points and hitting the F key to fill those faces. And then I'm gonna bring this on down again underneath the mouth. Hit extrude, scale out a bit. All 
and move this up to here and merge it. Okay, so now we're beginning to get that nice design for the edge loops that you can see around the mouth here and also now around the eyes. So this really is the basis of the um, of the edge loop flow for the character's face. The great thing about this is you could just save this now and use this for pretty much any character. All right, so let's continue and let's extrude this piece out a bit and then begin connecting these up. And finally, one more here just to finish this off. Okay, so now we're to the point where we can begin pulling this out into three dimensions. So let's do that here. What I'm going to do is begin with this center line of vertices and just select a point in the front view and then pull it out to its proper place in the side view. I'm going to hit the Z key to go to wireframe here and just then move back move down the character here, selecting points and moving it out to match the, the reference image. All right, so now that I've got that front line done, I'm gonna move one over and begin on the next row, the next vertical row of vertices. All right, now I'm going to start moving in the points around the eyes. And now I'm going to bring in the sides of the head here. It's, it's kind of hard to know exactly where they should be, where the points should be, but that's okay. You don't need to put them precisely where they are going to go. You just need to get them generally in place so that when you take a look at it in three dimensions you can begin to see where to pull the points to. All right, so there we go. Let's now take a look at this in our default view. So here we have the basic loop mask. From this point we're going to want to look at this from all angles and pull points forward and back to get it to look more like our character.